Welcome to Skywatch. I'm Jimmy Lease, and I write for the news report cancelf35.substack.com. And I'm Danica Katowicz, and I am the co-director of Code Pink Women for Peace. Our guest today is Ashley Adams, who lives in Burlington. Ashley owns an industrial manufacturing company located across the street from the north end of the runway at Burlington International Airport. Ashley also owns uh, residential properties. She rents out 14 units in the Chamberlain School neighborhood of South Burlington, which is immediately adjacent to the airport. So, Ashley, you've been speaking out about the F-35 at city council meetings, at city committee meetings, and at airport commission meetings. What have you been telling Burlington South Burlington and Winooski city officials? Well, a lot actually. It's, there is so much to the issue, um, you know, and it, especially because I'm both a, a business owner in that community and I rent housing to people in that community. Um, the, my primary concern is that people are suffering and uh, there seems to be an utter lack of awareness about this problem. So elevating that, um, the fact that there is a concern, a uh, grave concern about human health and child development. Um, in my opinion, city councilors, our leader, leaders in general, are aiding and abetting this harm and it's immoral and something needs to be done about that. So that has been the primary thrust of my argument. Um, local government is meant to protect residents, not allow harms to be perpetrated against those residents. And the quiet enjoyment of our home is something that we all deserve and should be able to expect. And I can't provide that any longer to my tenants as a result of the F-35. Um, you know, I. I think that if folks in other parts of the city were exposed to the level of noise um, that my tenants are exposed to, we wouldn't be having this conversation, quite frankly. You know, that's something I've noticed speaking uh, to other people who live around the city, that uh, people who live, let's say, in the southeast quadrant of South, of South Burlington, further away from the airport, sideways, to the runway have a very different experience than people who live in what the Air Force designated as this oval-shaped noise zone. And people who live there really get it far worse than people who live further away, like where the mayor of Burlington lives on Summit Street. It's a very different experience. It's loud, it's inconvenient, it interrupts conversations but it isn't at the level of pain. It isn't causing suffering, it isn't causing children to cry. And right. so they think that's the experience. They need to spend some time in the neighborhood where this is really excruciating. And more than a, more than a thousand families live in that. The Air Force said 3,000, almost 3,000 families live in the extreme noise zone. Yeah, and you know, I, I have the experience of um, personally experiencing that noise with the proximity of my workplace uh, to the end of the runway. Um, and, and then, and knowing that my tenants are, are experiencing that, and then driving home to Burlington and having what you just described, a very different experience, where certainly we can hear them. Um, they're a nuisance, but what folks, near the end of the runway are experiencing is levels of magnitude beyond nuisance. So it's not, um, I've heard uh, some people refer to it as a NIMBY problem. Um, it's not a NIMBY problem. This is something that should be in nobody's backyard. Right. Yeah. And Ashley, I just have, could you tell us a little bit about how the F-35 maybe impacts, um, you know, your business operations. And, you know, if you want to expand a little bit more on tenants as well, that would be that would be helpful, I think. Yeah, um, I, I will. I, I'll tell you a little bit about how um, I personally experience it and then how I experience it as um, 
as a business owner, um, and it's, you know, for for me personally, I, I grew up really um, at my business. My parents started the business in 1968, and it was a very quiet, sleepy airport. I even had a borrowed pony in the backyard. Um, and we, my dad lived there, my parents were divorced, and I would stay with him for weeks at a time. We would have, during the summer, the windows open at night. Um, it was a very different place, let me tell you. Um, the F-16 really changed uh, things quite dramatically, and we spent a good deal of money on um, sound uh, noise attenuating windows for the office. Well, the F-35, has been a completely different experience. And while it doesn't completely negate um, the, um, the help um, from investing in those windows, it has, uh, it has really impacted um, our ability to conduct business seamlessly throughout the day. You know, I, I don't leave the windows open in the office because I certainly can't have a conversation with someone or a phone conversation while the windows are open. And the last thing I wanna do during a phone conversation is panic and run to close the windows uh, in time. So, it, and, it's, um, and it's distressing, quite frankly, when you walk outside um, to, when I go to my car, uh, it's, it, I can feel it in my chest when they fly overhead. I can feel the sound reverberate throughout my body. I have um, tight chest, a racing heart, and I am dashing for the car <laughs> or dashing for the office. Um, quite ironically, we require um, earplugs to be worn in the shop because we, uh, the sound that we generate as a business within the, uh, the manufacturing floor somewhat exceeds 85 decibels. So they're wearing um, hearing protection throughout the day, you know, and meanwhile, we have sat noise exceeding sometimes 110 decibels, upwards of 115 decibels right outside. So it's, it's really quite ironic. Um, we have a picnic table we don't use out front, you know, it, it's healthy for folks to get outside during uh, and take breaks, and that's not something that, um, that any of us feel comfortable using. Uh, because the F-35 could fly overhead at any time. So your business is is almost directly across the street from the end of the runway. Yeah, so it is. Uh, it's it is Directly across from us is the helicopter uh, facility, the Black Hawk helicopter facility, which um, is provides um, absolutely no issues with, uh, with noise. Um, Burrard Drive is adjacent to two doors over, and, and then the runway lights are right there. Near Pizza Putt, exactly. many people. Exactly, right, next door to the former Pizza Putt, exactly. Um, yeah, and I, you know, I actually, while we're, while we're on the topic, if we have a moment to just share, I have some feedback uh, that I wanted to share from three employees that I think we can um, just share on the screen so that folks get a little bit of the flavor of what it's like to work in close proximity um, to the F-35. Um, one office employee said that it's almost impossible to hear each other. Um, we pause conversations, we wait for them to fly by. Um, we, I have to pause meetings. The windows rattle. Um, being outside when they're taking off or landing is painful. Uh, my my mom, our controller, um, had an experience in Fairfax recently where she was, the F-35s flew low overhead. Um, she was shocked that they were flying in Fairfax um, and it sort of brought that panic back to her, that, that panic that she experiences at work and Fairfax while they're flying about, overhead. Fairfax is about 15 or 20 miles north of, of the airport. Right. Is Right, yeah, it's very, very odd um, to see them there and, and shocking um, for her because, you know, for her, having been there um, and, and worked there for many decades, uh, for over 50 years, um, she uh, really, it, it's quite a shocking experience um, to deal with that level of noise. And we, we liken it to um, what sounds like a war zone and, it, and, and we 
question why our leaders find that to be acceptable. Um, as a mom, I question why that is acceptable. You know, I, I never imagine being a mom and raising a child in these conditions. Okay. Um, so that's, um, do, oh, go ahead. No, no, please go ahead. So I was going to ask about some of your tenants. Do they have children? Do, you have 14 families living. And are there children living in these homes? And how close are they to the runway? Yeah, there are. Um, so my tenants are um, working class folks. Um, some of them are immigrants and new Americans. Um, several of them have children. Um, some of them receive um, rental assistance. And again, you know, our laws are meant to protect residents and they deserve quiet enjoyment of their homes. And I, and I actually brought um, something that I think about frequently is, you know, I'm not going out to enjoy that picnic table during lunch. My tenants um, aren't going out for, um, for other reasons. You know, they, they might be concerned about their children. And so I brought, a, um, I think we can show this on the screen, a, a, an email that I received recently from one of my tenants who is on Airport Parkway, um, again, in close proximity to the end of the runway um, near Kirby Road, the intersection of Kirby Road and Airport Parkway, where I have a couple of duplexes. And um, I won't read the whole um, email here, but I think we can share it with folks. And, you know, she says, it is extremely loud right here. Um, when my nine-year-old was a bit younger, he would run inside covering his ears. When you're outside and they're taking off, it's very uncomfortable. There have been many occasions when one of us has been sick or didn't sleep well and was trying to sleep when they took off. They're impossible to sleep through and it's been really frustrating when our kids are woken up um, when they needed to sleep or when I was trying to get work done. They are so incredibly loud and she says, and I, I share this feeling, that I think it's hard for people who don't live right here to understand. Um, I think that our leaders need to be encouraged to physically go to these locations and sit with that noise and experience that noise. Yeah, it's, you know, the FAA wouldn't permit this if it was a civilian, uh, if it was a civilian aircraft. And it's rightly way, so. of way above what the law allows for civilian aircraft. It's also uh, illegal under the military's own regulations. but. Our, our city, state, and federal officials seem to have a hearing problem when it comes to hurting our own people and doing what's necessary to conform to the law, to conform to the regulations, and to conform to human rights and civil rights and any kind of decency. They just, they just don't, they, they don't understand the rules. They don't get it. They pretend they don't know their own powers. They're always telling us we don't have the power. And it's really, really, um, it's really gotten, gotten uh, a little of a noise. It's, like, uh, it's so outrageous to have our own city and state officials imposing this kind of cruelty. I agree, and you know they're they're not doing their jobs. Um, I I have seen I haven't seen a single um, city official speak out and speak up for residents of Chamberlain or of Winooski or surrounding communities. I have yet to see that, um, and I question you know if they aren't concerned about human health, why aren't they concerned about uh, degradation of the housing stock? Why aren't they concerned about the housing crisis and the fact that 44 acres have, around the airport have been sacrificed to the F-35? How many houses could be built there? Far more, I'm sure, than the 200 that were demolished. Um, think of the beautiful, walkable community that would result if we could restore housing to those 44 acres. Um, right. and, and think of the habitable community that we could create for the rest of the folks who are living there right now. Think of the, think of the improvement to their quality of life. 
Right, and the, the the forty-four acre, the forty-four acres, as you say, had had two hundred, roughly two hundred houses that were demolished because of the F sixteen, which preceded the F thirty-five, and it was only when the F sixteen started using its afterburner routinely for takeoff in two thousand eight that that noise exploded. It's five times louder than the F sixteen was before it was using its afterburner for takeoff. And the timing was so coincidental, but no public official has explained why two years before the scoping for the F-35 started, suddenly the F-16 uh, was using the afterburner. But we found out in the, in the environmental impact statement that the way the decision, that the decision for the F-35 and the decision for all environmental issues where there's an environmental impact statement depends on what is the baseline level of the problem. And in this case, it was a noise problem. So what they did was they, knowing they wanted to bring the F-35, here's the theory, knowing they, they increased the baseline of the F-16. Mm -hmm. So then they're comparing the F-35 with a much, much higher noise level for the F-16. So people have had to suffer from this F-16 afterburner from 2008 to 2019 until the F-35 arrived right. for no good reason, yep. just that they wanted to increase the baseline. Yeah. Now, if that isn't despicable, inhumane, gross, uh, just mind boggling, and, whole generation of children went through the Chamberlain School exactly. and went through schools exactly. in Winooski and in Burlington for this kind of maneuver. Exactly. And now we have the F-35, which is just as loud or louder than the F-16 afterburner, but it doesn't get turned off. When the F-16 took off with the afterburner, soon after it, it left the ground, they turned off the afterburner because it's a big waste of oh. fuel. It's a gigantic fuel consumer. Yeah. So if they're going to do their mission, they have to turn it off. So by the time it got to Winooski, one mile away, it had long been off. And so with the F-16, there was no real change in the noise level when the F-16 used its afterburner for takeoff. But now, with the F-35 as loud or louder than the F-16 with its afterburner on, Winooski is being crushed yeah. by this noise. Awful. And so is Williston Awful. when they have to take off in the opposite direction mm -hmm. because of the wind yeah. direction. Yeah. I uh, actually found out something interesting today um, that was timely for this, this interview. Um, every... Every summer in August, Chicago, where I'm based, has uh, the largest like outdoor free festival, the Air and Water Show, um, where they regularly display fighter jets. And for about a week before the uh, the the show, they have all these fighter jets flying around the city doing their practice runs. And previously, they've been you know Blue Angels or F-22s, um, different fighter jets. But I found out right before uh, we got together today that actually the F-35 is going to be in the Air and Water Show. So, you know, the same planes that are oh. causing a bunch of issues in Vermont are going to be flying over the third largest city in the United States. And previously, activists in, in Chicago who have opposed the Air and Water Show oppose it, you know, obviously the noise reasons. And, you know, th this is only going to be worse this year with the F-35 because uh, the noise isn't even comparable. Uh, to the other fighter jets that they they've had around noise has been a complaint but also um you know issues of you know why are we like blowing so much co2 in the air for you know to watch planes fly around for two days uh every summer and so Aisha, i was wondering if you wanted to speak a little bit to you know the other issues with the f-35 that you see uh any other concerns that you have like climate or that sort of thing yeah um i Two different issues I'd like to raise. I'm glad I'm glad that you mentioned that. And climate is a um, a huge concern um, of mine. And you know, as a Burlington resident, I'm keenly aware of the hypocrisy um, of a city that declared a climate emergency in 2019, and yet 
does not count flight emissions in their net zero plan. And so they're left out entirely. And isn't it amazing the, the airport came out with a report just recently that says that 99% of airport greenhouse gas emissions are from these flights. All the, all the work the airport's doing is for its ground operations, which account for 1% of the emissions of the airport. Why the 99% they don't have right. a plan for. Right, exactly. No, no plan to reduce because we're not, even, we're not even acknowledging them or counting them. You know, it's much like the McNeil generating plant. We don't acknowledge the emissions, we don't count the emissions, and therefore we don't plan to reduce them. Just and meanwhile, we, we burn up the atmosphere, right? I mean, it's just, um, it's, it's, it's crazy. And they don't, um, and they don't want to, and they, then they pretend, gee, we don't get it, we don't know, we don't have power, we this, we, uh, go somewhere else. Yeah. Go, go file a lawsuit. This was the latest one from the supposedly most concerned uh, city official in South Burlington who said, why don't you file a lawsuit? So, so I, that, so that we on the city council, including me, don't have to do anything. Our job. We don't have to do anything to protect the people, even though it's the job of city officials, of town officials, of select board members, whether it's a village, town, this is the primary job. They call it the police power to protect the civilians, the citizens of the town. Now, that job could mean protecting them from all kinds of people, but it also involves protecting them from business and corporate and other levels of government. That's what we have divided powers in this country. That's the plan of our Constitution because the founders expected one level of government to do bad things and it would be corrected by action of the other levels of government. But we, here we have our city officials collaborating Exactly. With They're not doing their job. They're not defending the Constitution, which requires them to stand up to the other levels of government when they're doing something wrong. That's yeah. the whole idea. So we have implemented the tyranny the founders wanted to prevent. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, Every, every leader in surrounding communities, every city, city council member should be up in arms about this problem and they should be going to the city of Burlington and demanding change. You know, it's Burlington is the proprietor of the airport and that lease needs to be terminated. You cannot, you cannot, no, no lease gives a tenant free will to perpetrate harm on citizens, period. And it's my firm belief that if our leaders did their jobs and united behind this problem and demanded this of the city of Burlington, we would see change. Oh, I think you're right. I think that if Winooski city officials, if South Burlington city officials uh, called up the uh, mayor in Burlington, if the members of the city council in Burlington uh, would speak up about this. Yeah. If, uh, very rapidly, Not we, a peep. Would, we would see some change. Whether they're progressive, Democrat, uh, we don't have it. I don't think we have any Republicans no. on the city council. This is purely a Democrat and progressive city councilor issue that's being uh, perpetrated on. Uh, thousands of families speaking up for human rights that it's it's a it's a basic um, a basic role <laughs> that they should be playing and you know here's another option reach out all of you all of you leaders um, reach out to our congressional delegate delegation and let them know that we have been it, it's no longer theoretical we've been living with this plane for uh, since 2019 and the harms are real and something must be done. You must rebase this aircraft. Right. It's get, not, it, get it out of our populated cities. And, and they have two ways to do it. One, because of the noise and two, because of the emissions. Absolutely. The emissions, the emissions really give them, I mean, with, with the horrible situation we're having this summer, with 
this air quality problem, with the fires, with the um, extreme temperature, everything is going wrong downhill fast. Now's the time to seize the initiative and, and set a standard for all aircraft using the airport. Exactly. Passenger yep. miles per gallon standard. That would eliminate the F-35. It would eliminate the pri these gas-guzzling private jets. <clears throat> and it would exactly. still leave in place the civilian commercial airliners that 99% of the people or more rely on for long distance transportation because those get more than a hundred passenger miles per gallon and it would also uh, it would also include the cargo aircraft if a similar standard was implemented. Donica, do you have any further questions you wanted to ask? Yeah, Ashley, I was wondering if you could just tell us briefly a little bit more about the the campaign to stop airport expansion in the Chamberlain School neighborhood last year and a little bit about that effort? Yeah, I'd be happy to. Um, I, you know, became aware that the airport was um, looking to rezone 11 acres of open space um, across from the uh, four of my apartments on Airport Parkway, um, Airport Parkway and Kirby Road at that intersection. And um, I was outraged, um, you know, they, and I, I have a graphic that I'd love to share. Um, I, I'm sure we can uh, bring it up on the screen of a proposed enormous um, building, which involved a hangar and, and so forth, um, which dwarfed, <laughs> dwarfed my, uh, duplex buildings and you know this in what was meant to be a buffer zone and what the city um, called for and the, and the airport itself called for was a buffer zone um, between airport operations and um, and residences and I and I was outraged that they were looking to eliminate the bu uh, buffer and build a uh, Whatever their intention was, um, it would it would be noisy invariably. Um, so I got involved, and I consequently I attended a meeting. I expressed my frustration. There was a um, task force that the city set up to investigate the issue, and they um, I thought they did a terrific job, and they solicited comments from the public. Um, but I think several of us, and I, and I actually um, met several folks, um, yourself included, Jimmy, through that effort, um, were aware that only, or only certain individuals can attend a public meeting, and we felt that it was important to get out in the community and actually talk with residents. Um, so we canvassed the community, we circulated a petition, and we brought that petition um, to city leaders. and that task force ultimately voted uh, unanimously to say no to rezoning, um, to recommend no to rezoning, and the Planning Commission um, agreed to decline that rezoning effort. So very happy about that. But um, who knows what the airport has up their sleeves next. Right. Now, <laughs> we must remain diligent. Now that campaign was really an inspiration because as a result of the canvassing and as a result of the petition and the work that you and others did, uh, many people came out to the public meetings and one after another they spoke about against the airport yes. expansion and they also spoke against the F-35, which for many people was driving yeah. the opposition to the expansion because they just had had it exactly. with what the airport exactly. is doing. Yeah, it just, for me, it was piling insult upon injury to even consider allowing uh, the rezoning. And when we were canvassing, I remembered, and I'll wrap it up, but I remembered um, talking with so many folks who just were, um, distrustful of the airport, felt powerless to do anything, knew that the airport would do whatever they wanted to do, were concerned that they would potentially even lose their housing at some point. Um, it was a real eye-opener. Um, it was a real eye-opener. Well, that's a really uh, good note upon which to conclude our episode of Skywatch because we did have a victory in that campaign and we anticipate having more victories. 
uh, we know that uh, the human rights prevail, that the arc of history bends towards justice. And uh, so that's the purpose of this program. We're going to be building the campaign. By the way, we have a rally scheduled for July 24th at 6 p.m. at Burlington City Hall before the city council meeting at which these emissions issues are going to be taken up. And as you said, it's the McNeil plant as well as the F-35 that are the huge emitters that the city council of Burlington ignores. So we're going to be pressing them to uh, put a stop to both of those. And thank you very much, Ashley, for joining the, the show. Danica and I thank are you. delighted to have had you. Thank you both. Had you on. Thank you. Appreciate and it. Good night. Thank you. Good night.